Hi, I'm Marge Charmley, and I'm from St. Paul. I'm Anita Kozan, and I'm from Minneapolis. Welcome to Bi Cities, a show by, for, and about the bisexual community, our friends, and our allies. For those of you who might just be tuning in, we are the longest running show in the history of the world on bisexuality. In fact, we're coming up on, we're finishing our ninth year of being on uh, cable TV and now on the internet. So wherever you're seeing us, thank you so much for joining in. And uh, I know my co-host, Marge Charmley, has been out of town and very, very busy. So we want to have the latest news flash from Marge. Well, the latest news flash is I got my toes done. But you know, <laughs> being that I'm kind of stuck behind here, I'm not going to get a chance to show them off. So. But I will tell you that I just returned from Washington, D.C., where I was attending the American Psychological Association annual convention. And I'm on the Council of Representatives representing the state of Minnesota. And at this convention, we came out with a new version of our uh, resolution to support marriage equality. And it's fabulous. It's the largest psychological association in the world. And when we speak, um, it it travels. Uh, USA picked it up today, and uh, USA Today picked it up in CNN. So I'm very, very proud to be a member of that organization. And uh, last month, the Minnesota Psychological Association came out with a resolution to oppose the anti-gay marriage amendment that will be showing up on the ballot in 2012. And we will be taking an active role in getting and disseminating news about um, the GLBT community that's scientifically solid and that um, sheds light on the what I expect will be a very vitriolic debate that uh, comes up. So very, very happy to be a part of all that. And the other wonderful news that I heard is that I went to listen to a speaker, one of the keynote speakers was Dr. Lisa Diamond, who is a professor at the University of Utah. And she talked about her research on sexual fluidity and sexual orientation. And she revealed that, ta-da, bisexual people are the largest group of people who have same-sex attractions. We used to think it was gays and lesbians, but it is, we are no longer the unicorns, we are the horses, Dr. Kozan. <laughs> Yee! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank so, you, Dr. Thank you for Charmody. listening. I just uh, I get really excited about that's, that, and, that's and that's great. cutting that edge really research is. about sexual orientation. That is so, so. cool. Yes, very cool. Yes, and I'm assuming that factoring in now were these only women that she studied? Yes, 15-year longitudinal okay. study. So then we know for sure that. So uh, we know more about women's sexual fluidity than men's at this point, but mm -hmm. you know. All right. So thank yes, you for telling yes. us about that. Well, now, I'd love it if you'd switch gears and tell us how you happen to get these fine people as guests tonight. Well, you know, many years ago, I was on the St. Paul Human Rights Commission, and we founded a gay and lesbian, back then it was gay and lesbian task force, to study whether or not we should reintroduce protective rights for the gay and lesbian population, which had been denied us in 1978. And there were there's a lovely man on that task force whose name was Dick Hewitson. And wow. I remember Dick talking about starting this project in this library called Quatrefoil Library. He and his partner, David Irwin, started it along with two other people. Twenty-five years later, Quatrefoil Library is celebrating its 25th anniversary. And here tonight is the chair of the board of Quatrefoil, Scott Fogel and one of the other board members who is involved, Laura Warnest. So welcome very much, and Thank we're just you. absolutely thrilled. I mean, you know, it just kind of brings me goosebumps to remember <laughs> being in on the early discussions. I mean, I heard Dick talking about it, and of course knew David back then, but you guys have kept it together all these years. And, you know, maybe you could just kind of pick up with, you know, how it started and who started it and, you know, what do what, what you do for the community? Sure. Do you want to talk? Sure. Um, I think you did a great introduction, and thank you for having us on. Um, Dick and David literally started the library out of a closet in their home, and 
that closet has evolved into a collection that has more than 20,000 books, DVDs, and periodicals today. We are, I wish that we could always claim that we're the oldest GLBT library in the world, but we are not. We are the second. Um, wow. Really? Yeah. Um, actually, there was a documentary that said the first one was in New York City, actually. Our closest um, relative is the Gerber Hart in Chicago, and they're slightly older than us. So, um, but we've been around for 25 years, and that's something to be that's phenomenal. Some, some, yes, it's something to be proud of. So, you know, Dick and David started this library um, to give back to the community. They had a brunch that discussed this idea with um, some of our original members. Um, a couple of those people are no longer with us, unfortunately, but. Over the last 25 years, the library has been in um, a couple of different locations. We've been in our same location for 20 years now. We remain a 100% driven um, volunteer organization. We have no paid positions on staff. Um, we are completely supported by our volunteers and our members. So a lot of the things haven't changed in the last 25 years. What has changed is that we've just gotten to be a lot stronger organization. You know, that passion that's prevailed over 25 years, I mean, it's not always easy to keep, you know, a, a volunteer yeah. organization going. So kudos. And Laura was telling me before we went on the air that there is now a coordinator. How, tell about the volunteers, Laura. Oh, sure. Um, we have volunteer coordin We actually have a volunteer coordinator at the library who is in charge of the desk volunteers, the people who work behind the scenes processing books, um, basically anything that goes on with volunteers at the library. And we also have a head librarian. Um, her name is Kathy Robbins, and mm -hmm. she's amazing. And she's really kind of the key <laughs> of this organization. She just keeps everything going. Mm -hmm. um, she really knows her stuff. And we've been lucky enough to have a lot of librarians who volunteer with us. Librarians who volunteer. Real live yes. librarians. Fantastic. Wow. Exactly. How many volunteers are there? Um, I want to say it's around 70. Yeah. Is it more than that? And it's, it's a variety of people that do everything from um, desk shifts like Laura's talked about. We, the, um, we have a Saturday work party once a month, and a lot of people just sometimes show up for that. We have people who are exclusively just board members. So, I mean, it's a lot of people in a lot of different variety of roles helping keeping the doors open on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's people from all walks of life, from librarians like Laura said, to um, people from the financial district. We have um, a couple, a teacher like Laura is. Um, <laughs> I have a background in marketing. We have a, a, post, a postal worker on our board. So, you know, it's great diversity of people. That's a reflection of our community. We come, like, in the GLBT community, we come, community, we come from all walks of life. And at the Quattrofoil Library, we come from all walks of life as well. So if somebody wanted to check a book out or a DVD or something, mm -hmm. how, how do they do that? Do you have to become a member, for example? Or? Um, yeah, you do. You have to become a member at the library in order to check out materials. Um, it's a yearly fee. Um, it varies in price depending on if you're a student, a senior, um, a household. There's a variety of different options. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you would have to become a member for a year in order to check out books at the library. And we also have DVDs available to check out. How did you get involved? You're on the board of directors, yep. and, and I have to say, Laura and I worked together at Humboldt Secondary School in St. Paul, so it was really fun to have you on the show in this capacity. How did you get involved with the library? Um, I heard about the library, I want to say, 14 years ago, 13 or 14 years ago. Um, I was in high school, actually, and my high school history teacher recommended it. Um, I was doing a paper on the Stonewall Riots, and I wasn't really finding, because this was before you could just Google everything, yeah, <laughs> and right, so right, right. I wasn't really finding the information that I needed at my local public library or at the school library. So um, my history teacher actually recommended Quatrefoil, and so I spent a day there. My mom even came with me and we rifled through books and kind of you know tried to find what I was looking for for my project and I actually used it again in college um, I wrote a paper on bisexuality and um, female to male transgender people Great. So, wow. yep. tell us about how you came up with the name how was it named Quatrefoil is actually named after a book by James Barr and it was one of the very first books ever to prominently feature a gay and lesbian character in a, in a positive light. And I th David was very taken by the book. And as a matter of fact, at one of the anniversaries, um, Games Bar came to the event. Oh my gosh. And um, 
a lot of people always ask us what does quadfoil mean and so we do have an explanation and actually this year we made a very interesting choice to legally shorten our name um, we still will use quadfoil library but for years people call us the library get the Q so in June we the board approved the short name of Q library um, quadfoil is who we are and it's what we will remain but we have gone to a shorter name um, right now. Kind of like P Fund from the Exactly, it's the same situation. Well, yeah, you can quote. sort of be yeah. queer too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why. Yeah, yeah. 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 Q yeah. Library. It, it, yeah. It's, it's kind of got an S ring to it. So, and a lot of people have been calling us the Q Library for years. Even we use it interchangeably. So, I mean, we'll always be the quad foil, but Q is now acceptable for us as well. <laughs> Very wow. nice. And it makes it a lot easier. Um, we have an online presence. We have our own website. Um, we have qlibrary.org. We have a Twitter account for Q Library. We have a Facebook account for Q Library. And we have, I think, a couple videos, one or two on YouTube. Yeah. So it makes it easier <laughs> if people are typing in the address to type in Q Library instead of Quattrofoil. Speaking of address, where is Q Library located? We are off Snelling and Dayton. Um, we've been there for 20 years. Uh, if you're familiar with the Family Tree Clinic. In St. Yes. Paul. In yes. St. Paul. Yeah. Uh, very easy to get to, just basically south on Snelling. If you've passed O'Gara's, you've gone too far, as I always like to tell people. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're in the Family Tree Clinic, on the lower level of the Family Tree Clinic. And just south of I-94 on Snelling yeah. Avenue. Yep. It's a very Dayton. easy, it's a great neighborhood. We have off-street parking. It's very safe. We've never had a problem yeah. with anyone bothering us, which is yeah. nice. Yeah. It's yeah. like a big school building. It is. Yeah, the it's a great location. I, yeah, it's, it's the old Richards Gordon School building. Mm -hmm. We're open there um, seven days a week, um, seven amazing. to nine, yep, Monday through Friday, and then we have daytime hours on Saturday and Sunday. Okay, so seven to nine p.m. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, so seven that's to nine p.m. Yeah. Seven Monday to nine p.m. Monday through Friday, yeah. and then. Um, it's Saturday is ten to five, and Sunday is one to five. Yes. So, yeah. Wow. All right. Great. Never so thought about going to the library in the evening. Well, <laughs> because we're, because it's... The clientele. Because, actually, not because we're clientele, it's because we're a landlord. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Family Tree Clinic, this is such a wonderful organization, and they've been a phenomenal landlord to us. Um, Do they own been, the building now? Yeah, they, they are a landlord, and they've been wonderful to us, and we we're one of the longer ten tenants in there. So, you know, they have services that need, they need to offer during the day in that parking it, it's, it works out, it's a good relationship with them, mm -hmm. so. Well, back in 1978, I was the president of the board of the family tree. Oh, were you? Yeah, yeah, I started cutting my teeth in counseling. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, as a volunteer at the family tree when it was over on Selby Avenue, so. Yeah, I mean, we've developed a nice relationship with them and a lot of other members um, within our building, too, so. How did you get to the library? Um, I had heard about the library for years, and my closest friend, who was also a lesbian, Oh, she means she's a lesbian. <laughs> 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 My closest friend who's a lesbian, I were at a point where we want we had talked about for years, and so one Friday night we went over there and said, "Let's just check this place out." And we enrolled to become desk volunteers. I started hanging around the library a little bit more, doing some work parties. Um, eventually, got what is a work party? It's a work party while we process books. We get a lot of tasks done, we, even though we have a head librarian. We have a lot of things that need to be done, you know, sorting through things. There's just a lot of maintenance that goes in keeping an organization up. So these people, we are, our volunteers help us get a lot of things done. And a work party is a great way to meet other members of the library, meet other volunteers, and have a good time. We always have, and they're always fun. Yeah. I mean, that's We always mm -hmm. laugh, and it's, it's a good time. So I got involved and just started talking to people, and one of, uh, someone was sitting on the board said, why don't you join the board? Actually, Laura had actually left, and I took her spot. She had left town for a while, yeah. so I got her spot. Um, served on the board for one year. The next year, I was the vice president, and for the last two years, I've been the president of the organization. So, in six years, it's been quite a little tw rise to it, it success. <laughs> 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 Don't know if I'd go that far. <laughs> Well, what's something, if you each think about, what's something that you're really proud of about the library? 
What's something you think of, Laura? Um, I'm proud of the materials that we have and that we don't censor what we have. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a lot of controversy in the past about um, should we have erotica, should we have, you know, any sort of material. And yes, I mean, you know, sex is a part of sexuality. And that's just something that it's weird because there's been a good amount of opposition to that. Like, well, yes, we're a GLBT library, but we shouldn't focus on that. Well, that's a part of who you are. And to just negate that, you know, mm -hmm. it doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm just really proud of the fact that we're an open, accepting space and we don't censor ourselves because there's no reason to. Great. How about you, Scott? Oh, there's so many things. Um, you can name several. You know, <laughs> it's, it, it, this has been we're a great by year. This, this, <laughs> this has been a great year for the library. <laughs> so, I mean, there's just, I, there's always things that are running through my head. But, you know, I think what I'm, res I'm the most proud of is our volunteers, our members, the people who continue to believe in us. If, there's a book written about the history of the Quad Foil Library, and I love the story of how some people didn't even think there was a need for a gay library because what's gay books? It's nothing but maybe just trash. Well, the gay a gay library, a GLBT library, it has so many wonderful things. And so I'm grateful to those people who continually support us and whether they're being a volunteer or they're a member. And I think, and we have this great group of donors who are, have been invaluable to us. They've saved us money because they've donated some very wonderful things to this wow. organization. So it's the people that I'm really proud of. Do people ever bequest their collections to you when they pass yeah, on? Yeah, we've had some pretty nice ones. Um, and of course, I'm blanking on a name. Um, the representative that Alan Spears. Alan Spears donated part mm. of his collection. Thank you. Wow. Mm -hmm. Donated his collection. Um, we don't take letters. That's one of the things that we don't take. But we took some of his books. Um, the Treader collection over in St. Paul will mm -hmm. take letters and those types of situ those type of material. But yeah, we do have people who have donated not only the book collection, but they've also left us in their estate, which has been really nice. Ooh, wow, yeah. Yeah. that's wonderful. I went over to Q Library trying to find somebody to come on the show after I <laughs> met you guys, and I, I lost your card. So I went over there one night, and you kind of have a little um, poster board up of you know some famous people and so on that have come. So who are some of the people Probably that have? Work on. Oh yeah. <laughs> or the other one. You know. Didn't we have Armistead? We had Armistead. Come. Um, James Barr. James Barr. Um, we're working on a project with Majors and Quinn coming up with um, Alan Hall and Horse is going to be in town. We're going to do something with them. We've um, Qu uh, Quentin Crisp uh, visited the oh library. Mm -hmm. um, so there have been people who are aware of us. It's kind of fun. Um, are those things publicized ahead of time? We're like the thing with. Um, this project we have going on with Majors and Quinn, we're just finalizing those details. We just have started to develop a relationship. You know, we're always looking to expand our relationships. And, you know, there it really isn't a good GLBT bookstore. And MSM doesn't really do their, I mean, sorry, True Colors. I still yeah. want, they don't do a lot of author signs. We've, we've done some author events for Women's History Month. So we've you've done some what? Author events, I'm sorry. Author events. Mm -hmm. um, we, Ellen Hart has done a couple of things with oh, us. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. um, I love her books. So, yeah, she's been, she's been a help with the library as well. Yeah. Great. Um, tell us about the anniversary. What the celebration. What's planned. Yes. Yeah. Um, we're having a 25th anniversary party in October. Um, it's Sunday, October 16th. Um, it is from 2 to 5 p.m. at the Loft Literary Center. Um, upstairs, they have a big space called the Target Performance Hall. And so we're going to have um, presentations of awards, um, a slideshow of the history of the library. Mm -hmm. We're going to honor um, past members and basically just have a really, really good time. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's been Do you want to say more about that? Yeah, it's just been a great year. I mean, unfortunately, we can't open to the public because of the spacing needs. We have, you know, 300 of our closest friends, allies from the community. But, you know, we've been trying to celebrate the library throughout the entire year. Um, we so the party is by invitation only? Unfortunately, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we can't crash it. <laughs> well, maybe you can crash. media. <laughs> <laughs> media. So.
or we could volunteer to serve or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll sweep or get a membership. <laughs> or get a membership. Right uh, oh, there you go. So. It's been a great year for us. Um, Lavender awarded us their Priority Award. Right. Oh, Tell about that. Congratulations. Yeah, yes. that was a big honor for the library. Um, I got the email like, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, so the people at Lavender have been longtime supporters of the library, and obviously they said, oh, they must have realized it was the 25th anniversary. It's a good time to recognize the library. So we were featured in the Pride Edition, and then um, received the award. It's, it so was you didn't end. even have to lobby for it. They just kind of no. came to you. No. That's no, kind of nice, it was nice, isn't it? The award's on display in the library now, so it was, a, it was a great, it's been a, a lot of good things have happened to us this year. We have a very strong board, which I'm glad Laura's part of and I'm happy to be a member of, and we've just, we've been doing a lot of exciting things. We made a significant donation to another emerging library earlier this year, and um, we're launching an endowment campaign, so there's just all this excitement. It's, it, Everything seems to be coming together. Well, and time. we're trying to kind of move <laughs> move with the times a little bit. We're finally barcoding our books. Um, oh, we've, for the yeah. longest time, had, you know, the yeah. card oh, checkout yeah, system. Yeah. And yeah. we're finally moving towards that. We're getting our books barcoded. Um, that's part of what they do at the work yeah. parties also. We're, we had uh, our previous system was dead, and so we had to buy a new library management software. So, yeah, we're going to be getting scanning books finally instead of... I'm excited for that. Yeah, I'm excited not to dump over the card catalog like I've done <laughs> <laughs> once before. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, isn't it nice to have cheap thrills? I mean, maybe <laughs> they're not so cheap. That, that wasn't you know, so much as a cheap oh, thrill as a nightmare to watch all the cards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, I did want to say, too, a little bit more about the Saturday work party because that's my volunteer shift, so I'm always there. Um, it's the third Saturday of the month, and anyone is welcome. Um, it's from 2 to 4 p.m. We have snacks, beverages. We usually have really good cookies and mm. all sorts of stuff just there for anyone who wants to volunteer. And like Scott said, we have a variety of tasks that you can do. Great. Yeah. Well, you know, you brought along a book about the history of Quattrofoyle Library, and maybe you could hold it up for the camera. camera. So this was a book written about the library, um, and it's also available on qlibrary.org for a free downloadable. Um, that was written about the first 25 years of the library. Yeah. And who wrote it? Um, Adam Keim wrote it, for, um, and one of our longtime benefactors um, paid for it to be published. Wow. So, so nice. that particular is mm -hmm. out of print now, right? So it was never a circular. It was, we were um, given copies for various reasons for board members, for mm -hmm. certain people who have made donations to the organization. It's been just kind of a tool for us to promote the library. So, But the nice thing is it is available online. And it, it's at your website, right? Yeah, it's called. Your website is qlibrary.org. qlibrary.org. And if you go underneath the history section or about the library, it will be there. Yeah, I actually started looking at it. Fascinating history. Yeah. It is. It's um, for 25 years, some things don't change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any highlights? You know, the moments that you feel especially proud of or that really stand out the last 25 years. Um, when we had the alms conference, um, we hosted the alms conference at the library a few years back, and it was just amazing to have people come from all over the country from um, GLBT libraries and just kind of talk about what we do. And we're really unique at the Quatrefoil in that um, we have some archival books, but we also circulate, <coughs> and most other libraries only do one or the other. Uh -huh. They don't, a lot of them don't check out materials to members and don't have hours set that they're open. They're more of an archive space. Like the trailer collection over in St. Paul. Mm -hmm. Actually, and that's a great thing a lot of people get. Do you mean, is it in St. Paul now? I'm sorry, moved? University of Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. In the Elmer L. Yeah. Anderson um, rare letters and books. Yeah, I love I, going in there because you get to too. put on the gloves. And yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. people get confused about that too, and that's one of the things I always. People say, well, we have two GLBT libraries in town. No, we have a library and then we have an archive. An archive, yeah. which is great. I, I mean, think the Minnesota Historical Society also has a GLBT yeah. archive. Mm -hmm. So we have one true GLBT library. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> and it's Q Library. Yeah, it's Q That's Library. Right. That's right. So we have two minutes left, and I'm wondering if there's anything that you want to leave with our audiences. You know, what an incredible resource that's been available all these years. You've managed to keep it going. It's a wonderful resource. 
check us out. I yeah. mean, really, that's the thing. We and check something out. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Come visit check, us. Check, I mean, check, I always, check, I always check, like check. to say that we are the best kept secret in town, and so if you, we're open to everyone, and so come visit us, come see, see what we have to offer, and become a member. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and even, I mean, you can come into the library if you're yeah. not a member. And we have free Wi-Fi. We have computers you can use. Oh, my gosh. Um, yeah, we have people who just come in to use the computers. Um, we have people who leave their card at the library because it's a privacy issue, and we're fine with that. I mean, we're very accepting of anyone who wants to come in and use the space as long as they do it in a safe manner. And it's a comfortable space. I mean, you can yeah. just kind of sit and read and yeah. hang out and... And it's cool in the summertime. Yeah, yeah. There you, go. <laughs> there you go. Well, Scott and Laura, what wonderful work that you do on behalf of the community. And I'm glad that Lavender acknowledged all of what you do. And uh, the spirit of Dick and David and Dan Hansen and the other founder who we didn't talk about. What a wonderful legacy that you guys are carrying on. So thank you for being with us. Happy anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And would you join us? Well, I just, I just want to okay. say, you know, thank you for, for explaining all the things that are going on there and for kind of opening it up to me because uh, it did. It always felt like kind of like this private little enclave that, and it really, we are, everyone is welcome. Yes. I love that when you said it's open to everyone. That's great. And we're getting the rest. All right. So, so join us <laughs> in our signature goodbye, which is bye, bye for, for now. now.